addition of inert gases. It can happen at constant volume or at constant pressure. So let's see about that. Right? Okay. Now, basically, when you're adding some inert gases, you obviously know that the inert gas molecules will not interact with either the reactant or the product molecules. Right? Okay. So, whether the equilibrium will shift or not shift, we'll study. But, when you have added, if we ignore the equilibrium shifting effect, right, we know that since inert gas molecules are not going to react with either reactant or product molecules, right, their moles are not going to change because of this addition, because of direct chemical reaction with the inert gas. No, no, no. That is not going to happen. Some equilibrium shift, shift will happen. That we'll study, right? Apart from that, no other, you know, change because of the inert gas uh, reaction will happen. And it's quite possible that you might not just add the group 18 gases. You might add any gas which is inert to the reaction constituents. Sir, please say it again. We did not get it. What I mean is that, you know, A, let's say you have this reaction over here, right? Now, my point is, it is not necessary, you know, that you add the uh, group 18 elements. It is not necessary, right? And obviously, you know, you can add this as well. But the point is, you can add any gas E, any gas E, as long as that gas E does not react with A, B, C, and D. Mark my words, I said and D. I did not say or, right? So, it as long as the gas E does not react with A, does not react with B, does not react with C, does not react with D, we can call it inert to the system at hand, right? So, then it is also inert, right? Okay, cool. Now, what we can say though is that addition of inert gas increases the total number of moles in the system. Yes, that does happen, right? If you had, you know, let's say three moles of this, three moles of this, two moles of this, two moles of this at equilibrium, and you suddenly added two moles of the inert gas, all of a sudden you don't have only 10 moles. You have 12 moles. That is also true. Okay. But sir, what is the purpose? So let's see. Now, if the volume is constant, that is the constant volume, that is the first case. Remember, we were dealing with two cases. So, this is what we are starting with right now, right? This one over here. So, let's imagine something, right? Okay. So, now, let's say, you know, uh, your total pressure at equilibrium without, without the inert gases, right? And let's say we have the generalized reaction or the reaction we considered here, that is A plus B gives you C plus D, right? So, you have pressure because of A, pressure because of B, pressure because of C, pressure because of D. Okay. This is equals to what? Correct. Right? Okay. Cool. This much is cool, right? What is this? This is partial pressure, no? Okay, cool. Now, volume is not going to change. Right? Okay, cool. So, what did you do? You just added some new gas E. So, what is going to happen? You're going to have another component over here. What will that be? Let's say E. So, NE by VRT, right? In fact, so the space here is relatively low. What you can write is Na by V plus, or maybe you can write, you know, Na plus Nb plus Nc plus Nd plus Ne whole by V whole into RT. Okay. But so still, like, why are we doing this? So the point is, adding the inert gas at constant volume did change, did change the total pressure, correct? Okay. But did the population density of A change? No, no, no. 
how abundant is A in that gaseous system? That changed? No. Na by V did not change because V is constant. Did the population density of B change? No. So what we can say is, since the, since the population density of A and B is not changing, right, the frequency at which A and B are colliding will not change. So the rate of forward reaction is not changing. Wait, I'll summarize everything. Similarly, the population density of C and D is also not changing. So what will happen? Because of that, the collision frequency of C and D will also not change. Right? And because of that, the rate of backward will also not change, no? Okay, so let me summarize it this way. If inert gas is added at constant volume, right? The equilibrium is like, you are congesting the overall system. But, if I talk about the population density of A and B, they are not changing. If I talk about the population density of C and D, they are not changing. So if in my reaction, the population density of each and every reaction constituents A, B, C and D is not changing, then I am fine. My rates are not getting affected. Rate of forward is not changing. Rate of backward is not changing. Remember the case when reactants collided, you know, uh, and made products? Remember that? Okay. So, partial pressure of gaseous reactants and products does not change. What does this mean? What is partial pressure? Partial pressure of A is equal to what? Na by V RT, right? So, in books, you will find this generalized statement. But what is happening behind the scene? Behind the scene logic is what? Rates, right? Rate is what basically, you know, is the determining factor in equilibrium. Because when the two rates are not equal, equilibrium will not be there. When they are equal, equilibrium will be there. So this is the statement you will find in the books. But the reason is this. Collision frequency of A and B and C and B. Resulting in no disturbance to equilibrium and this is it. All right. Let's move on. So, yeah, obviously you can look at this, right? So, we'll wait. Look at this, you know, this, 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 uh, what do you call that? That tap or that valve that will move and some particles will flow in. Wait for it. Right? All right. Yeah, so it moved. Some particles are flowing in. Right, what has happened? Inert gas bar has increased. You see that? But this has remained unchanged. Maybe I need to, you know, get uh, aside a bit for this. So you can see it properly. Maybe I'm hiding this area. Right? So yeah, now you can see it properly that when the inert gas was introduced, this did not change. Oh, wow. They forgot to mention the reaction. So let me fill in over here. The reaction goes something like this, right? Okay. You can have this as well over here. Doesn't really matter. You can have this as well over here. So irrespective of the delta NG value, no effect. At constant volume, addition of inert gas. Okay, let's talk about constant pressure now. Okay, so at constant pressure, what are you doing? So let me, let me, you know, just... Take the help of a diagram. Now, wait. Don't read it. Don't read it. Right? Don't read it. We will come to it. Listen to me. You have a beaker. It has a piston. Okay? It has a certain pressure. Internal pressure. It has atmosphere on the top. Right? So, there is internal pressure. There is atmosphere at the top. Correct? Okay. Now, if the piston is stationary, internal pressure is equal to the external pressure. Correct? Okay, fine. Now, let's say what happens. You introduce some gas in it, right? So, this moved, some gas particles are moving in. But you have said that keep the pressure constant, right? You have said that keep the pressure constant. Now, this beaker here is like, you know what? 
I have this much volume. I have this much temperature. If you are saying that you know P is equals to n by V whole into R T, you are increasing the n. You are keeping the temperature constant, and you want me to keep the pressure constant as well. So volume has to increase, sir. I cannot do without increasing the volume. So the volume increased. Okay, what happened because of that? So now let's go back, right? Now let's go back. What happened? Volume increased, right? Remember that. Okay. Now, in the previous example that we were writing over here, remember this is all that we wrote here, right? This was the constant volume case. In the constant pressure cases, these volumes here have become the new volume. Correct. Because of that, what has happened? The partial pressures of individual reaction constituents have changed. The population density of individual reaction constituents has changed. Correct, no? Right? So, the population density has changed. So, the rate of forward and the rate of backward have changed. And in this case, in this case, Correct. Okay. What are we going to do? What are we going to say? Think about it. Right. So the moles of A, moles of B, moles of C, moles of D. Just when the inert gas has been added, right, and the volume has increased to V2. What has happened? The volume has increased. The volume has increased. So all of these have become less congested. They have been spread apart. Right. They have become less congested. So what will equilibrium say? Oh, inert gas, you got added, pressure was constant, my reaction constituents A, B, C and D, they have become less congested. So I will give the opposite effect. Oh, so what will the opposite effect be? Making them more congested. How so? How can we increase, how can we increase, uh, sorry, how can we you know, make them more congested. Volume is not in our control. So what do we do? We increase the total number of moles. How? By moving in the direction which has more stoichiometric value. Which means what? That if your delta Ng is positive, you move forward. If your delta Ng is negative, you move backward. That is more moles will be produced on the left hand side. Remember we did this discussion in the last session. If a delta Ng is zero, no effect. Right? So remember this. Now let's try to, you know, read this, which I crossed out. At constant pressure, reaction will go in that direction, which has higher number of stoichiometric coefficient total higher, right? That is, whichever will give, you know, uh, well, in delta Ng positive, right hand side is higher. In delta Ng negative, left hand side is higher. In delta Ng zero, no side is higher. Both are same, so no effect. So this we saw, this was the, you know, this example. Okay. And because of that, we also saw that, you know, this was not changing with the introduction of inert gases. Now, let's take this example, right? Let's take this example over here. What should happen? The reaction should move forward towards delta Ng positive, no? So, here you are, oh, so it has already been opened. We missed the bus. So let's wait for the valve to open again. And here we are. And this also you can see is increasing. Parallelly, parallelly, what we missed here is that parallelly, if you see the reaction has moved forward. Do you see that? Right? The reaction has moved forward here, and this has increased, this has decreased. So I'll just move aside a bit. Can you see this? Right? Okay. Let's take the opposite example. What should happen? The wall should move, this should increase, this should decrease, and this should increase. And this is what we have. 